A major WWE superstar may never walk again after nasty bump at Money in the Bank 2024. Drew McIntyre should not have won the 2024 men's WWE Money in the Bank ladder match. Seth Rollins addresses Becky Lynch's contract amid her break from wrestling. Roman Reigns' video honoring his father leaked. WWE had to speak to Canadian authorities to let Jacob Fatu into the country. Unseen footage shows what happened to the bloodline after MITB. Backstage details on Damian Priest not kicking out. CM Punk's in ring return status. Let's dive right in. Drew McIntyre should not have won the 2024 Men's WWE Money in the Bank ladder match. Drew McIntyre won the 2024 Men's WWE Money in the Bank ladder match outlasting five other men to grab the iconic contract. The Scottish Warrior wasted no time, cashing in on the World Heavyweight Championship match to make it a triple threat match. This paved the way for McIntyre's bitter enemy, CM Punk, to legally interfere under triple threat no disqualification rules and cost him the title. The outcome furthered the duo's blood feud, but left the watching audience divided regarding whether it was the right decision. Was the Scottish Warrior winning the briefcase the best decision, or was the contract wasted to further a single storyline? Should the win have gone to any of the five other stars in the match, none of whom have ever been world champion? Here are three reasons why it was a mistake for Drew McIntyre to win the 2024 WWE Men's Money in the Bank match. Number one, Drew McIntyre did not need the contract as much as the five other WWE superstars in the match. -all. Of the six men in the 2024 Men's WWE Money in the Bank match, only Drew McIntyre was a former world champion. The bout was full of incredibly popular superstars, such as LA Knight and Jey Uso, waiting to break through the glass ceiling and claim their first world title. Given that the briefcase is arguably the company's biggest star maker, and the year-long timeline for using it, one can't help but feel like McIntyre needed it the least. Not only is he a three-time world champion, but he is also embroiled in arguably the hottest rivalry in the entire company, which often feels like it doesn't need any title to be compelling. Taking this into consideration, the Scottish Warrior may not have been the best choice to win the contract. Number two, Drew McIntyre's failed cash-in arguably hurt both him and the WWE Money in the Bank contract. Both Drew McIntyre and the Money in the Bank contract have seen hard times in WWE recently, especially under the Triple H regime. The three-time world champion has lost a string of golden world title opportunities at the hands of the likes of The Bloodline, Damian Priest, and CM Punk. Meanwhile, the men's briefcase has racked up an abysmal 33% success rate under the game. The latest failure involving the Scottish Warrior and the iconic contract has left some fans disgruntled with both bookings. This section of the audience can't help but lose a little faith in the future of both, which could affect excitement for the match concept in the future. There are always opportunities to remedy that in the future, but it's hard to shake the feeling that it was a booking misfire. Number three and number four, Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk did not need the involvement of the MITB contract and overshadowed Damian Priest versus Seth Rollins. Drew McIntyre and CM Punk currently have arguably the most heated feud in all of WWE. The duo has exchanged incredibly personal verbal and physical attacks throughout 2024, driving anticipation for their eventual match through the roof. Their dynamic has become one of the most compelling things in the entire business, feeling more interesting than most title feuds in the industry. This raises the question of whether it was necessary for the Money in the Bank contract to suffer collateral damage from their animosity instead of going to a hungrier star. Could Punk not have attacked McIntyre during the ladder match itself, denying him the briefcase instead? Couldn't the angle have been executed without overshadowing the World Heavyweight title match? One can't help but feel there were better ways to advance the feud without sacrificing a year's worth of MITB storytelling and making Seth Rollins and Damian Priest afterthoughts in their own match. Seth Rollins addresses Becky Lynch's contract amid her break from wrestling. Becky Lynch lost her Women's World Championship to Liv Morgan at WWE King and Queen of the Ring. Determined to get back her title, Lynch challenged Morgan to a rematch on Raw last month, but was unsuccessful. Lynch is currently a free agent, and Seth Rollins has now addressed her status amidst her free agency. Liv Morgan defended her Women's World Championship against Becky Lynch on the May 27th edition of Monday Night Raw in a steel cage match. Despite Lynch's best efforts, Morgan won the match and retained the title. This marked Becky Lynch's last WWE match for the time being, as Lynch is currently free agent. While speaking during the Countdown to Money in the Bank show, Michael Cole sat down with Seth Rollins for an interview. Cole would directly ask Seth Rollins about Becky Lynch's status after she left WWE following her loss. 
Seth Rollins confirmed that Becky Lynch is doing well, but stated that he cannot talk about her future or what she has planned for the future. He added that his daughter Rue is doing great as well. The man's great. She's great. I can't speak to her future or what she's got moving forward, but she's great. She's in good spirits. The little one's awesome as well. She's a menace. She runs the ship. A former WWE writer also believes that Becky Lynch should demand Randy Orton level money in new contract. Becky Lynch is also expected to receive the largest contract offer in women's history. We will have to wait and see what big time Bex will ultimately do, as the world is truly her oyster right now. Do you feel Becky Lynch will return to WWE eventually? Roman Reigns' video honoring his father leaked. Roman Reigns has been notably absent from WWE television following his defeat by Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania 40, marking the end of his historic, nearly four-year-long title reign. This hiatus coincided with a significant personal loss, as his father, Sika Anoa'i, passed away at the age of 79 on June 25th. The wrestling community mourned the loss of this legendary figure, and Reigns has been deeply affected by his father's passing. A poignant photo from the memorial service showed Roman Reigns alongside Rikishi and Reno Anoa'i, also known as Black Pearl, highlighting the close-knit nature of the Anoa'i wrestling dynasty. In a new video shared by Reigns' cousin, Zilla Fatu, on Instagram, the head of the table is seen delivering a heartfelt eulogy for his father. Reigns recalled a powerful life lesson when Sika threw him into the deep end of an Olympic-sized pool, teaching him to swim or sink, a lesson that profoundly impacted his career. I told him I'm good over here, we're good. Next thing I know, I am looking left, looking right, my hair is snatched, and he launches me into the deep end of this Olympic-sized pool. Reigns recounted. Sika's passing marks the end of an era in professional wrestling, but Roman Reigns remains committed to honoring his father's legacy. Fans are eagerly awaiting the return of the tribal chief to WWE television. The current storyline involving the bloodline has seen Reigns temporarily ousted from his position as the head of the table, and his return promises to shake up the ongoing narrative. Stay tuned as Roman Reigns' comeback could bring dramatic changes to WWE and the fate of the bloodline. What are your thoughts on Roman Reigns' eulogy for his legendary father, Sika, at his memorial service? Dewey had to speak to Canadian authorities to let Jacob Fatu into the country. Former MLW heavyweight champion Jacob Fatu, who signed with WWE earlier this year, made massive impact with his debut on the June 21st episode of Friday Night SmackDown. However, his journey to compete at Money in the Bank was far from straightforward. Fatu's recent appearances on SmackDown have showcased his formidable presence both inside and outside the ring. His undeniable talent and aggressive style have made it clear that he's a force to be reckoned with. Interestingly, WWE had to negotiate with Canadian authorities to allow Fatu to compete at Money in the Bank. On the Countdown to Money in the Bank pre-show, Michael Cole revealed that WWE and Triple H were actively involved in ensuring Fatu's entry into Canada. There's been a lot of jokes about Jey Uso and getting into Canada, but we have a serious situation with Jacob Fatu, Cole stated. WWE, including Triple H, had to work with Canadian authorities to get Jacob Fatu into the country for this match tonight. This shows how dangerous he is considered, not only by WWE, but by outsiders as well. Fatu's past criminal record had previously prevented him from wrestling outside the US. Unseen footage shows what happened to the bloodline after MITB. The bloodline stood tall over Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens at tonight's Money in the Bank Premium Live event. The match ended with Solo Sokoa scoring a massive pin over undisputed WWE Champion Cody Rhodes. Solo Sokoa's bloodline is running roughshod over SmackDown and claimed three major victims tonight. The faction defeated Rhodes, The Viper, and KO in the main event of Money in the Bank 2024. After the show went off the air, the bloodline could be seen heading to the back with their heads held high, leaving the dejected babyface trio in the ring. Solo Sokoa recently declared himself the tribal chief and turned on Roman Reigns in a promo on SmackDown. He blasted Reigns for losing the undisputed WWE title to Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania XL. Solo also made it known that he would be the one to dethrone the American American nightmare in the near future. Now that Solo has pinned Cody, one can't rule out the possibility of him becoming the new undisputed WWE champion when the two stars meet in the ring in a title match. Solo would love to establish himself as the top star on SmackDown in Reigns' absence. Backstage details on Damian Priest not kicking out.
Controversy marred the World Heavyweight Championship match between Damian Priest and Seth Rollins at the WWE Money in the Bank 2024 Premium Live event held at the Scotiabank Arena in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. The incident centered around a botched pinfall attempt, and new details about the incident have recently come to light. In a high-stakes match at WWE Money in the Bank, Damian Priest defended his World Heavyweight Championship against Seth Rollins, with a pivotal stipulation. If Priest retained, Rollins could not challenge for the title as long as Priest held it, but if Rollins won, Priest would have to leave the Judgment Day. As the match neared its climax, Rollins executed a falcon arrow, but the referee controversially stopped counting it too, despite Priest not kicking out. Amid the confusion, Drew McIntyre appeared with his Money in the Bank briefcase, signaling his intent to cash in. The bell rang, and McIntyre attempted a future shock DDT on Priest, who countered with a clothesline. In the ensuing chaos, CM Punk made a surprise appearance, assaulting McIntyre with a chair, choking him with a cable, and striking him with the title belt. Seizing the opportunity, Priest capitalized by pinning McIntyre to retain his championship amidst the chaotic conclusion. Keen-eyed viewers observed that Priest did not actually kick out as Rollins pinned him during the match. There was speculation about whether the incident was a mistake by the referee, if Priest forgot to kick out, or if there was a timing issue with Drew McIntyre's interruption. While speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer clarified that Priest simply didn't kick out. Meltzer explained that after asking around, he learned that Priest didn't kick out. There might have been a timing issue where the music was supposed to hit at a specific moment, coinciding with Drew's arrival, but it was confirmed that Priest just didn't kick out. Whether Priest was disoriented or something else happened, the noticeable mistake was discussed post-show. Triple H commented that he needed to talk to the referee implying the storyline aspect. He also mentioned that everyone would criticize Priest despite his great performance, emphasizing that the focus should be on the overall match rather than the mistake. The referee had no choice but to stop the count, given the situation. I had asked around and basically the story I heard was that he didn't kick out. I think there's a possibility that there might have been a timing. This is not what I was told when I watched it, but maybe there was a timing thing where it was supposed to be like one or two, and then the music hits, and then because Drew's coming down right away, and then maybe like that's supposed to be the thing in the music, but when I did ask it was, he just didn't kick out, and you know, that was that, so whether he was rocked, whatever it was, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, you know, there was a very, very noticeable thing, and Laval even was asked about it after the show, and just kind of gave this thing of, well, I need to talk to the referee. Because he basically said, yeah, the guy didn't kick out, and he talks the referee way held up the count. But he also said it like, Triple H, I'm doing this which basically saying, wink, wink, the storyline. But then he started with everyone's going to be on Priest's case, and Priest wrestled such a great match, and why be so negative? You know, everyone's gonna talk about how he screwed up, but it's like he had such a great match. So that was kind of like the way it was. So yeah, it was, he didn't kick out, and they said that he didn't kick out, and the referee stopped the count, and the referee shouldn't stop the count. But the ref in that situation, boy, did he have no choice, boy, did he have no choice? What could he have done? Triple H has also defended Damian Priest after the major botch at Money in the Bank. Regardless, the upcoming weeks will reveal how Damian Priest will be booked as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. It's evident he will defend his title against Gunther at SummerSlam next month, setting the stage for a massive match. Do you feel the botch really affected the overall match? CM Punk's in ring return status. CM Punk, sidelined since January due to a triceps injury, has remained in the spotlight primarily through his ongoing feud with Drew McIntyre. He made a shocking appearance at Money in the Bank this week, and now his in-ring return status for SummerSlam has been revealed. Drew McIntyre utterly annihilated CM Punk on the June 21st edition of Friday Night SmackDown and left him bloody mess as he was transported to the hospital, thus writing him off WWE television. However, CM Punk made sure to return the favor as he cost Drew McIntyre the chance to become the world heavyweight champion at Money in the Bank, resulting in McIntyre's failed cash-in. Punk would then state that he is ready to go when it comes to his in-ring return. While speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted that while it's not 100% confirmed, a match between Punk and McIntyre at SummerSlam is likely. Punk was asked about the potential match and gave an evasive response, indicating that the final decision hinges on medical clearances. Meltzer notes that there's a strong sense of confidence about the match happening, but it can't be guaranteed just yet. Right now, it's not 100% for Punk and Drew at SummerSlam, but I was told it is probable. Punk was kind of asked about it, and he kind of beat around the bush, 
it's probably happening, but he did kind of say that it's up to other people to get cleared and everything by the doctors, and they may, I was pretty much told that they are pretty confident, but they can't go and say 100% because it ain't 100%. Via ringside news. It remains to be seen whether the Second City Saint will be ready in time for SummerSlam on August 3rd, as fans definitely want to see Punk and McIntyre finally square off against each other. What are your thoughts on the potential match between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam? How do you feel about Punk's return and the build-up to this highly anticipated showdown? A major WWE superstar may never walk again after a nasty bump at Money in the Bank 2024. There was a lot of carnage in the two Money in the Bank ladder matches at the WWE MITB Premium Live event on Saturday in Toronto, Canada. A top star who took a nasty bump during a match even commented that they might be unable to walk again. The men's MITB match was a banger, but the women's match might have stolen the show. Sky and Zoe Stark took multiple hellacious bumps while Chelsea Green put her body through two tables after falling from high above a ladder inside the ring all the way to the outside. In a post on her official X account, Green shared a clip of her high-risk bump and commented on her condition after the match. I may never walk again, Green claimed. Chelsea Green was posting in character, reacting to her name trending on social media following her epic table bump. Green went from possibly not walking to demanding fans to take down the video of her falling off the ladder and into the tables within a short span of time. In his post-show press conference, Triple H confirmed that no one was seriously injured during the event, although there were some WWE superstars who were pretty banged up. He was also very happy that there were some breakout stars from the two MITB ladder matches. I thought we had a spectacular event tonight. Very excited that so far everyone seems to have come out unscathed, banged up, bumps and bruises, but no one's seriously injured, which I always hold my breath on these events. You wanna see people have the best outing that they can possibly have and make memories, but do it safely, and we were able to do that tonight. I thought a lot of people, and I won't go through the whole card, but a lot of people had what I feel like were breakout performances tonight, Triple H said. 